First of all, knowledge means you have some knowing of the person. Preach on in here. Wisdom is meaning that you understand basically something about their mind. Amen. And understanding, meaning you communicate. Good preaching. You have some knowledge of the person. You, 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 you have understanding. You have communicated. And you have wisdom. Is they crazy or not? You don't learn that out. You don't need to find out they're crazy at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> preaching up in here. You should have some knowledge, some wisdom, and some understanding before love. Hallelujah. How you don't have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, no communication, no knowing, whether they are crazy or not, no understanding, do they love God? Wisdom is the coming of God and knowing of God. You know none of that, and you talking about they, you love them. You wake up in the morning, they stand there over you looking crazy. You didn't know what's going on now. Hallelujah, somebody. That's why we are always in uh, frustration and aggravation and division and can never build a structure in a relationship because we have not found out what love is. Love is more than a physical look and, a, and, and, and love is more than intimacy and love is more than a house and a car. Love is deeper than that. Love is unconditional. We got to move over into the spirit realm and come out of the natural realm. Hallelujah, somebody. What kind of love did God have for the church? God never felt again physically in love with us. He loved our, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, but he said that this temple won't even inherit the kingdom of God. He said, I'm going to leave this stuff on earth. The love I have for you is the Christ inside of you. The love I have for you is the thing I call the church. And if you could love, watch this, what God said. He, watch what God said. If God so loved us, y'all got it? Oh, watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let's, let's put it on the screen. Watch what he says in uh, verse 11, 1 John 4 and 11. He said, beloved. He said, you already beloved. Y'all see it? He said, you are beloved. Beloved. He said, I love you. He called us already covered by his love. He said, hey, beloved. Hug yourself and say, I'm loved by God. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, be loved. You know that I didn't tell you to hug nobody else. Hug yourself. Learn, first of all, that God loves you. Yeah. Be loved. Watch this. If God so loved us, then he put that word ought. We, 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 you know that he know that we have a problem with it. Oh, come on. He knows we have a problem with what love is. So he said, if you be loved by me, and since you so loved by me, you ought to. He didn't say we were doing it. Amen, somebody. Because we're in and out of what we call love. God said, you don't even know what love is, but you ought to at least learn what love is, and then you ought to love one another. You ought to love one another we ought to love one another. Why? Because love is of God. The whole church is built off of love. Not, not, watch this, watch this. You, you see church, you see people in churches fighting all the time. You see churches dividing all the time. Can't get along with each other. Same church, same God. But sometimes we walk down different aisles because we ain't learn how to love one another. We ain't learn how to talk to one another, forgive one another, communicate knowledge, wisdom, and understanding so we can be in the same church with an attitude about a brother in the Lord, a sister in the Lord. We're in the same church, but we ain't grown up yet because we have not learned what love is. So now there's argument in the pews. It, it's division in the pews. It's disagreement in the pews. Not only in the pews, in the home. Sometimes it's in the house. Two people married, fussing all the way to the church. Get in church, don't hear a thing because they're mad at each other. There's some problem in the church. We ought to be loving one another. That don't mean we are loving one another. We ought to. Oh, let me help you out. 
Now, when they say we ought to love one another, it don't mean that Minister William, you just love Sister William. That's kind of easy most of the time. Amen. But what, amen, amen. But, but, but he said you got to go beyond your wife. You got to love the people who don't like your wife. See, in the church, in the church, you can't get attitude because somebody don't like your wife. See, so we get mad with folks who mad with somebody we love. So our love go no further than our attitude. Oh, you said so and so about who? I know you ain't just say something about mine, mine, mine. Lord, now you mad, they ain't said nothing about you. What you ought to do, see, you ought to say, look, kind of work it, look, tell your wife, work it out with them. And I'm going to be praying for you. If I can intervene and bring the two of y'all together, we're going to make love happen. But see, our love is based on condition. I'm preaching real good in here. Our love is based on how you treat me. Somebody shout back at me. We some selfish people. We are selfish because we don't know what love is. Our love is based on if you treat me good and you do what I want you to do for me, then we can live together. And then we say we love each other. But it's based on condition. How you act in the morning? How you act in the evening? How you treat me? Am I the center of all attention? Do I get everything I want? And that's how we did, that's our love. It's based on too many conditions. Watch this, watch this, watch. Walk with me, walk with me. If I were to ask most people, do you love your car? Some of us say, yeah. But more people would say, no, I don't love my car. I don't love my car. Then I'm going to ask a few questions then. If you don't love your car, why do you treat sometimes, why do you treat your car better than you do your spouse? How do you treat your car better than you do your children? You make sure that your car is washed and polished, wax. A lot of people, they wash and wax the car. They make sure it has all the eternal needs by changing the oil so the heart of the car will run better. And they'll tell people, don't put that cheap oil in there now. They'll go to the gas station and fill it up with the best gas. They'll vacuum it out. Amen, somebody? And then they'll turn around and, and spoil the car by putting little stuff on it like tw 24s. <laughs> the, car, the car didn't even come with it, but they say, I, I got I to hook you up, baby. I got to hook you up. <laughs> so they put 24s. And then they'll put little image and things all on it, tinted and stuff. And then, then watch this. If they don't, they still don't love that car. They're not in love with the car. But they're in love with what the car does for them. Now watch this. Just like, see, as long as the car make them look good and take them from A to B, the car can continue to get perks. But the minute that car is no longer able to do for them anymore, they trade it in, divorce it. Because the car just don't make me feel like I used to feel. The car done got a little old now. The car looks slow now. Amen. I don't, it don't make me look as good as I used to look. Well, you look just, look, look. Now I don't have the car got old. But the car got all of that stuff. 
simply because it did for you. It carried you. It was a blessing to you. So you did things for it based on condition. But the minute the car starts costing you too much. Oh. This just too See, our love is based on things like this. This too much now. No, no. When I first met you, you don't got to be too much. You, you, you're frustrating me now. I used to have some joy and peace when I met you, but every time I hear you now, sometimes, sometimes when you talk, you get on my nerve. When I see you, see what you're used to, you're used to, you're used to the erotic type of love. You always got to have the latest model. I may need to come back on this side for a moment. Yeah, you, you got to have the latest model. What did Jesus do? Jesus said, when I saw y'all, y'all was in the junkyard. Y'all ain't hear me preach. Jesus said, I didn't go to the new car lot. Y'all were full of sin, iniquity. You were broken down. You were rusty. Ain't nobody wanted you. But my love found you in the junkyard. Y'all to give God a praise in here. God said, you weren't shiny. You didn't have new tires. You didn't have new oil. I found you broken down. I need some people that have been redeemed in here to know when the Lord found you. You weren't all that. You weren't doing all that. God found you with broken heart. Somebody had done you wrong. You were frustrated. You were depressed. And yet Jesus said, I'll take it. And I like how he did it. He said, not only I'm going to take this out of the junkyard, I'm going to pay full price for it. Hallelujah. I'm going to pay full price for a piece of junk. And I'm going to shed my blood and shine it up and make it new. I'm going to put joy in it. I'm going to put peace in it. I'm going to love it back to what it's supposed to be. Somebody give my God a praise. I've been through too much not to worship him. He pulled me out of the heap, the muck and the mire clay. And you think I'm not going to give God some praise? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you only knew my story, oh, you'll praise him for me. Hallelujah, somebody. He found us. Listen, he found us in a mess. Let me tell you about man. When man see another man in a mess, man leave him in the junk pile. We ain't fixing up nothing. All our shopping is for shopping. We shopping for something new. Thank God. And and, and only thing about something new, we get old quick. <laughs> Ain't nothing new. Nothing in this world new. Watch God. You and I was broken. That way he told Jeremy, go down to the potter house and watch the potter on the wheel. The potter made a vessel, but it was marred. It was cracked. It had some problems. And the potter said, I can't put it on the shelf like this. So he broke it, he laid it, and he made it again, perfect and new. But before he put the potter on the shelf, he had to take it through a few things because he had to purify it. Y'all ain't hear me preaching here. He had to purify it. But God said, listen, I'm going to do, I'm going to go through my love for you 
is that, see, this is what the potter does. He, 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 it's amazing what the potter has to do. He put it on the wheel, he get a knife, and he spin it, and he cutting it. Maybe it's small up here, big here. Cut another piece. He cutting it. So Jesus said, in order to redeem you, I got to be cut. And then, and then when you get through cutting it, it put, they, they, you have to put it, when you get through cutting the parlor and got it shaped like you want it, you got to put it in, you got to put it in some fire. So Jesus went through the fire for us. And lastly, in order for the potter really, really to cure and to get hardened, you gotta, you gotta bury it in a dog place. You gotta keep it in darkness for a while. But after a while, you gotta bring it out of darkness. And Jesus was put in the grave for three days, and on the third day, he got up. But watch this his love and our love are different. Now, watch this. Let me go back and call. I need to find a place to close. They come to my church now. Watch, watch. I'm just going to talk about the men. Let me talk about men for a while. They're a little different than the ladies when it comes to love. Let me tell you how, let me tell you how women spell love. A-F-F-E-C-T-I-O-N. I went too fast. Well, let me just say it. <laughs> Women spell, spell love, not L-O-V. They spell it affection. You ain't showing no affection? <laughs> you can buy some flowers. She said, I don't want no flowers. You ain't showing me no affection. <laughs> you buy a nice car. She said, you buy me a car, but you don't pay me no attention. I got the flower in the car, but you ain't got no attention from you. Yeah. Women don't, as women see love as affection. And the last thing man, a man like to give is, is affection. Amen. Let me, yeah, that's, you, you want me to preach on that a little while longer. <laughs> you can tell when somebody pulling on you, like, preach right there, pastor. <laughs> preach right there. The one, number one thing, I'm going to preach it for you. The number one thing, I'm going to preach it for you. I'm going to preach this for 30 seconds for you. And here it go. The number one thing that women want is affection. Hallelujah. And the last thing men give is affection. They'll give you the house, the car. They'll give you the jewelry. They'll give you a whole lot of things. But the last thing we, in many cases, give is affection. But women say, you don't, love is affection. Men call love respect. Yes, Jesus <laughs> loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus. That, that's the song you better be singing. <laughs> love me. For the Bible tells me so. Now listen. One say, until you respect me, and let me tell you about the women. We don't got to the point now where the last thing a woman want to give is respect. Now they'll tell you you got to earn respect, but they don't want to earn love. They don't want to earn affection. Preach your own pastor. Listen to me. It is not by earning nothing. See, it's not, you, please, it is not to earn nothing. It should be received because the person carried himself in a respectful way and they are respectful. That's how I earn. In, in uh, 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 affection, all this, when we start talking about earning, we move from agape. See, we didn't earn God's love. I hope y'all hear me. See, see we, we want to say, you got to earn it. And 
Watch what happened when you, when you say a person has to earn something. Here's a man. He in love, so he say. And here's his wife. And here go three children. And he said, I love you. Now, he is doing for the children. His own children. He's doing for them. He's doing for the wife. They're doing for each other. And he's making sure the children are taken care of. Based on as long as they get, they're getting along. As long as me and you, as long as we got baby, little Johnny, little Susanna, she get anything they want called that's love. See now, his condition. It's condition. Yes, yes. The lady, the wife is earning her children support. The minute she says, I don't want to turn my back to y'all now. The minute she says to him, if this happened, I pray it never happened, we no longer can make it. Now, because it was condition, little Susanna, who I call the first baby? Little Johnny. <laughs> if it were love, then the support still keep flowing. Watch our love. Condition. So now she done went on and found someone else. Ah, let him. Let him take care. No, 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 hold it. Him shouldn't take care of your responsibility. But you no longer have. Watch Christ. Christ, what kind of love is this? Even when we turn our backs and backslide. I hope I'm sliding pretty good. Backslide. Even when we backslide. God so love us that he'll come where we have backslid. It is not conditional. He'll find us in the hog pen. Come on, somebody with me today. He'll find us in the bar, in the drug house. He'll find us in the jail house and the prison and he'll come through the walls and he'll sit down in the eight by eight and he'll talk with us because God love is not based on us loving him. You ought to give God a shout praise in here. Come on, give God a shout praise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad God is not like man. Hallelujah, somebody. The love of God. Woo, Jesus. For 31 years, God been loving this church. And you remember when God told her, Jose, he said, hey, go marry that, you know, prostitute. And he tell him all about the, I want you to see how the church treat me. And he told him, go buy a bike. Go buy a bike. Go buy a bike again. That's how the church treat me. He said, I keep on buying your bike. I love you so much. I keep buying your bike. You keep walking away from me. You keep walking out. God said, but I love. Thank God for the unconditional agape type of love. And who wouldn't love a God like this? Come on, somebody, give him a pray. Look. If you don't love nobody in this world, you ought to start praying to God. You ought to start worshiping him. You ought to get in his word and you ought to let nothing separate you and pull you from God. Amen. Where are the worshipers in here today? Come on. Come on, give you a few minutes of worship in here today. We were created to worship him. Anybody really want to give him some praise today for his goodness? and his mercy toward us. God's been good to us. How many high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, 
But when everybody else left me and everybody else forsake me, God promised he would never leave me. God promised he would never forsake me. So you think I ain't gonna come to church and give God some praise and give God some glory if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Won't somebody give it up to Jesus today? Hallelujah, somebody. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. As Jesus walked through Caesarea Field of Pi, he said, let's settle this thing. As I close today, he said, let's settle this thing. He said to his disciple, who do men say that I am? I, Jesus said, I want to know what, who is, what is the society saying about who I am? And, 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 and Peter and some, they begin to say, well, they say that you are John the Baptist or Elijah. They said, they, they're talking in the street that you are one of the prophets, maybe Jeremiah. Jesus said, well, uh, it's all right if the world don't know me. Y'all come on here. He said, it's all right if the world call me Jeremiah. It's all right that the world call me uh, Elijah. It's all right if the world called me one of the prophets. That's the world. That's outside. The folks on the outside trying to figure me out. He said, but what I want to know, who do you? Come on, church. Who do you say I am? I'm trying to look. The world don't know him, church. But watch this. But we ought to know God. We have been born again, bought with a price, redeemed. We ought to say so. Matter of fact, matter of fact, Matter of fact, stand right here, Minister William. Watch it, watch it. He said, who do you say I am? Watch it. Before Jesus got ready to leave, before Jesus got ready to leave, amen. Let me hold your phone for a minute. Before Jesus got ready to leave, he said to his disciples, he said, love ye one another. He said, if you learn how to love one another, are y'all with me, church? He said, then all men will know that you are my disciple by the love you have for one another. In other words, Jesus said, when you get ready uh, to go on a flight at the airport, they want your ID card, usually your driver's license, right? The driver's license tell you who you are. They let you on the airplane. Jesus said, what done happened in the world since love is your identif identification card, He says, a lot of us don't have one. When we love each other, the world know that's our ID card. Hallelujah. So who do men say I am? You'll be seated. Who do men say I am? Then he said, they said that you are the Christ. Uh, we say you are, Peter said, we are, Peter said, I say, Thou art the Christ. Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Are y'all ready to close church? Jesus looked at Peter. He said, You didn't get that from Eros, Phileo, the God of heaven who loves us all, has opened up your eyes and revealed to you who I am. You, watch this, you didn't get that type of revelation from flesh and blood. I'm closing now. If you want true revelation, what love is, is that going to come through flesh and blood? Somebody say amen in here. Stand right here. Yes, yes, stand right here. Two people so happy to get married. They so happy. Yee, my wedding day. <laughs> we just had the graphic read 47 years. We got some people on longer. Watch this. And, and, I, and I'm, gonna get in, I'm not going to get into all that today. Why, you're, why you didn't stay. I pretty much knew why. I already preached about it. Uh, pretty much. Certainly couldn't cover everything. Watch how the marriage vows go. 
the marriage vows are really built in agape. Do you take this man to be thy lawful wedded husband? She's just so excited to say yes. But, <laughs> but, but there's, that's, there's, some, there's, some, there's some covenant that come with it. In sickness, don't leave me when I get sick now. <laughs> and in health. Now, a lot of folk hear health. And richer. I'm with you, baby. You got that money. <laughs> but then it throws a kicker in there. For richer or for poor. Don't leave me when I get broken, got fired. <laughs> and this will cover everything. And for better or for worse. Give our God a hand. We're done today. Come on, magnify with me. Come on, let's stand and give God a shout praise. Hallelujah. Come on, magnify him in this place like never before. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of Excellence broadcast. Be sure to watch our weekly television broadcast on WMOR Sundays at 5.30 a.m. WACX Super Channel 55, Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. CTN Local, Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. And CTN National, Saturday, 10 a.m. You're welcome to join us at our live Sunday worship service at 10 a.m and Wednesday midweek service at 7.30 p.m. To become a covenant partner or sow a seed, visit our website at www.pclctheview.org or write us at 3520 Baker Avenue, Haines City, Florida, 33844. Or you may call us toll free at 1-866-747-4840. This program is sponsored by the Parkview Christian Life Center and their partners. Our prayer is that God will continue to richly bless you.